We were supposed to wake up with a decision for crying out loud, Mike Parry. Yeah, um, we were, but we all knew it was never going to happen. And I still think it will now probably go until about maybe Christmas Eve or something like that, because there's got to be legal ratifications to a deal right up to the 31st. But can I say quite clearly here, this is a major victory for Boris Johnson, the prime minister of the United Kingdom. A major, major victory. The speech he gave last night when he emphasised we're ready to go on world trade um, rules, the Australian deal or WTO. He was absolutely clear. We're ready to go on it. We've been working on it for four years. It's a new challenge. It's something that we look forward to. That has rattled the Europeans something rotten. Well, I don't know what planet Mike's living on, honestly. Um, <laughs> Boris Johnson said that if there was no deal, it'd be a failure of statecraft. As Sarah said, there was no need to plan for no deal because we had a great deal. He stood at the dispatch box of the House of Commons and said, we had that deal. And what you're seeing there is somebody who, and I'm sorry, you know, I, I like Mike, I think he's a good bloke, but I think part of the problem of this whole debate has been a large part of our media, particularly papers like The Sun, The Express, The Mail, The Telegraph, Whatever Johnson says in relation to what is happening in these negotiations, they just bang the drum and say it's all going terribly well. This is, frankly, a disaster. When Johnson yesterday, he said to businesses and to people, all of us who are sort of, you know, worrying about what's going to happen, he said, all we need to do is to go onto the website, government.uk forward slash transition. You go onto that website, there are hundreds, thousands of big questions still unresolved and we are literally weeks away from coming out without a deal now i still think actually jeremy i think he will do exactly what he did with the withdrawal agreement i think at the last minute there will be a deal and it will be a deal completely on the europeans terms because i'm afraid it was always a lie Mike's that they head. needed us more Mike is shaking there. his head and you, you don't because this this well, looks like he's shaking his head because he's a populist brex extremist Headbanger, if I may say so. Listen, Ali, Ali, for goodness sake, you don't have to get rude about it. I have different views to you, OK? And and, and I tell you what I find very interesting. I tell you if you don't, I find very interesting. No, no, but I tell you what I find very interesting, Alistair. You have been praising the way the European negotiators have been so dignified and, you know, so measured about the way they've approached things. <laughs> they wouldn't even take a phone call. They wouldn't even take a Can phone call from our Prime Minister last Can week. They wouldn't have a okay, video Alistair, shot with him. Yeah, okay, Alistair, I don't tell, tell Mike why. Difficult. What was the explanation? Merkel wouldn't take a phone call from Boris Johnson. I'll tell you why. Because we are now a third country. The reason for that is that we, vote, people like you, voted to leave. Right. We then left the customs union and we're leaving the single market. The European Union's proudest achievement is the single market. And what they've got and what our government has always said is that they'll all fall apart. We can divide and rule. They are united in protecting the single market. Boris Johnson is in charge of a negotiation with the European Commission. He should not be surprised that Merkel and Macron said, no, you negotiate. You're a third country now. You negotiate with the commission. Okay.